Coming up, ready for takeoff? For the first time in two years, American travelers can go massless on planes. Airlines dropping requirements, but why? New coronavirus cases are still going up, mostly driven by what's known as the BA2 variant or version of the virus. Is it possible to be sick with two variants at the exact same time? We'll answer your latest questions. Then Dr. John will be here with some home remedies for the hiccups. Also, we're marking Earth Day with a kid's guide to climate change. What is the first step to stop climate change? What you need to know and how you can help save the planet. Plus, this teenage girl has granted more than 25,000 wishes for seniors in need. I went around the nursing home and I asked them, if you could have any three things in the world, you know, what would they be? And my mom expected them to stay, say stuff like cars and money and a big fancy house. But when I went around and asked them, all they wanted was fresh fruit and a new pillow, better shampoo. Her super positive story just ahead. And the bad guys. It's the bad guys! Arrest them! <laughs> Come on, you can't prove that. My baby! Our Kids Edition correspondent, Lucy, speaks with one of the stars and the director of this new animated action comedy. How do you know if what you're saying will, like, seem funny? Well, I had the privilege of having a director and a producer in front of me on these Zooms, so when they laughed, I was happy. This is NBC Nightly News. Kids Edition. Welcome back to Nightly News Kids Edition. It's a blast to be here with you. Hope you're having a good spring. We've got a lot to share with you this week, including a look at mental health and one proven way to help kids relax, relieve some stress, and have something to smile about. Plus, we'll pay a visit to the National Zoo, where the Panda Conservation Program is marking a big milestone. And our kids correspondent, Lucy, will be here with a fun one, just what does it take to make an animated movie come to life? <laughs> Wolf? What are you doing? What? Yeah! yeah. Oh, that! Uh, I, I'm sorry, I thought it was uh, obvious. We're gonna go good! But first, let's start with the stories making news this week. And we begin with the pandemic. New cases of coronavirus continue to be on the rise in more than two dozen states. And this comes as masks are no longer mandatory on airplanes and some other modes of transportation, depending on where you live. We know you guys have questions, so look who's here with me, our pal Dr. John <laughs> Torres, for this week's Ask the Doc segment. Dr. John, our first question comes from New Jersey. It's about the variants. Here it is. Hi, I'm Athlean, and I'm nine. I'm Phil, and I'm seven. And we have a question about COVID-19. Is it possible to be sick with two variants at the exact same time? That's a really, really good question. I'm and that's anxious a, for the answer. That's a great question. The scientists are actually studying that right now because it doesn't happen very often, and it's rare, but it can happen where you can get two variants at the same time infecting you. And the reason that happens is because one might hit you one day and the other the next day, your immune system hasn't built up enough to chase them away. So you're not going to get sick from a variant day one and a week later, but if it's the next day, you can do that, and you can get double variants, which is why you still need to wear that mask to protect yourself. Yeah, the yourself. rules apply to exactly. protect yourself whatever. All right, as we mentioned a few moments ago, masks are no longer required to get on an airplane. I'm really curious what that means for families because kids under five, as I understand it, still can't get the vaccine. Exactly. So what should they know? And that means you need to be even a bit more careful because we know the ventilation on the airplanes is really good. But if you're within a couple rows of somebody who's sick, you know, if they're coughing and sneezing, you're going to know they're sick. But sometimes we don't know they're sick, so you have to be extra careful. So I still recommend wearing a mask, at least until we get COVID more under control because cases are starting to go up. If you're on a bus or a train, that's a little bit different because the ventilation is not as good there. So you might want to think twice about traveling that way. All right, so really good information there. We're going to switch topics now. Talk about something that many of us <laughs> experience from time to time. That's the, the hiccups, right? Exactly. <laughs> 
I, we're gonna, I want to talk about some things we can do to, you know, get over them. But first of all, explain what's happening there when we're hiccuping. So when we breathe, we use a lot of different things to breathe. Our diaphragm, which is a big muscle that goes across our body. We use the chest wall muscles as well, you know, our throat to get the air inside. And if those things aren't coordinated very well, you can start hiccuping. So a hiccup essentially starts off as a spasm of that big muscle, the diaphragm I'm talking right. about. And then the other things come into play, and that forces you to hiccup. And sometimes they just simply don't go away for a long time, and it can be really annoying. Yeah, I, it seems like spicy foods or eating too fast kind of trigger them for me. So there, there are home remedies. I've tried some. <laughs> we've all tried some. Tell us ones that maybe actually yeah. work. So here, there, there are tons of home remedies. You can ask anybody, and they probably have their own trick that works for them. But these are the ones that my patients say work best for them. And one of them is holding your breath for 10 seconds. Just and that. Just holding your breath for 10 seconds. And the reason we think that works is because, remember, I talked about the diaphragm and your chest wall muscles and the throat and your lungs, all that being coordinated. Well, that kind of just reboots everything. It just kind of shuts it down for 10 seconds and then starts up again, and it starts up synchronized so you're not doing the hiccups. I see you have a spoon in front of you because one of the ones I used to try when I was a kid, I haven't done it in a long time, is a teaspoon of sugar. Kids love this one. I just figured, well, <laughs> how could I go wrong? It's, it's sugar, right? It's a win-win. <laughs> and the reason you do it is you want to get a teaspoon of sugar and let it melt on the roof of your mouth. There's a huge nerve called the vagus nerve that runs through the part of our body, and that nerve is one of the things that causes hiccups or at least makes hic hiccup hiccups keep going. And if you put that spoonful of sugar against the roof of your mouth, it stimulates that nerve and it can activate it and get the hiccups under control again. So that's the theory behind that. A lot of times people say, oh, just get a drink of water. I've tried that. That doesn't help. But there's, <laughs> maybe I'm doing it wrong. Yeah. And so this is by far the one I love the most. And it's drinking a glass of water upside down. It sounds strange. <laughs> but what this does is something else. It basically, again, touches the roof of your mouth. So it activates that roof of your mouth, that nerve, that vagus nerve. But it also takes your mind off of hiccups. And hiccups, <laughs> Your mind plays a big role there. So if you can take your mind off of hiccup, hiccups for a while, then hopefully they get under control. And this is the one, this is my favorite. And this is the one that everybody tells me always works for them. So, let's, so let's how, try. Does, how does this work? Right. So what you want to do is get the glass right. and you want to drink on the far side of the glass. So, so you're going to have to here. bend over. Right. Okay. And so you have to bend over and drink. And when you do, let it hit the roof of your mouth. I'm doing it wrong. Yeah. And so you just drink like that. So basically, you put your chin kind of inside the cup right. when you're drinking and just let it hit the roof of your mouth as you're upside down. And that generally works. And it works really well. People tell me that is their favorite technique. You might get a little wet, so you might want to have a towel I might handy. get some weird glances <laughs> in, in the restaurant, actually. What's that man doing over there with that glass? <laughs> Dr. John Torres, as always, thanks very much. You bet. All right. All this week across NBC News, we're taking a look at an important issue that impacts all of us, and that's our Earth and the efforts to save the environment around us. Hi, it's Mary from Idaho. April 22 is Earth Day. Why do we have Earth Day and how do we celebrate Earth Day? Thank you. Bye. All right. Bye, Mary. That's a great question. Earth Day is an annual celebration. It happens every April to raise awareness about ways to protect the environment. Here now with more on climate change and what you kids can do is our friend Ann Thompson. Hi, Lester. I'm in Chicago at the Peggy Notabart Nature Museum. And climate change is an issue that's on a lot of young folks' minds because climate change is a global problem. So what are adults talking about when they use the words climate change or global warming? Well, let's find out. You probably have heard the phrase global warming in the news, but just what is global warming? Global warming is the process that causes the earth to become hotter. Scientists say it has gone up at least 1.9 degrees Fahrenheit since 1880, with most of it happening since 1975. Is the earth running at temperature? I would say that thinking about the Earth running at temperature as when we're talking about climate change is a good way to think about it because the temperature of the Earth is increasing the same way that our temperature would increase if we had a, a cold or a virus. And when we talk about climate change, we're talking about warming and its impacts. Wow. Like melting glaciers, bigger wildfires, longer droughts, stronger hurricanes. What causes climate change? 
almost everything that we as humans do on a daily basis has an impact on climate change and can cause climate change. So um, when we're using energy, for example, if we are um, making breakfast and we're using our oven or we are going to school and we're catching the school bus, all of those activities um, use energy and they create gases. Burning fossil fuels like gas, oil, and coal when we use electricity and when we travel. These fuels send carbon dioxide into the atmosphere. CO2, as it's called, acts like a blanket, trapping in heat from the sun, creating what's called the greenhouse effect. Also contributing to the problem? Cow burps. That's right. When a cow burps, a gas called methane comes out. It's another heat-trapping gas. Then there's deforestation. Forests can absorb lots of carbon dioxide. But when we cut them down, deforestation, much of that CO2 is sent back into the atmosphere, making things worse. We have a lot of uh, travelers. All these human activities, like driving a car powered by gasoline, are causing worldwide temperatures to rise higher and faster than any time we know of in the past. Who does it affect? Everyone and everything. Polar bears depend on sea ice to hunt, raise their young, and rest, but it's disappearing in our warmer world. Moose are at risk from milder winters that no longer get cold enough to kill ticks that can make them sick. More storms and higher sea levels threaten sea turtles, and puffins are having trouble finding food, leading to lower birth rates and chick survival. Then there's us. Higher temperatures are causing longer wildfire seasons and more powerful storms, putting homes and lives at risk. Now we have a really important question. This is Kai, Kosei, and Tai, reporting from Tokyo. We came here because we had a question about climate change. Our question is, what is the first step to stop climate change? Thank you. We love watching Nightly News Kids Edition. Well, in fact, kids can do a lot. Walk or ride your bike instead of asking your parents to drive you. Turn off lights, TVs, and computers when you're not using them. Recycle what you can. And keep asking those questions so together we can do a better job of protecting the planet. Lester? All right, Anne, thanks so much. Such an important topic. Also making news this week, Queen Elizabeth. The Queen is celebrating her 96th birthday. She ascended to the throne when she was just 25 years old and is Britain's longest serving monarch. Did you know the Queen will have a second, much bigger party in June to also celebrate her birthday? A platinum jubilee marking 70 years on the throne. Here's wishing Queen Elizabeth a happy and a healthy birthday. And speaking of milestones, the Smithsonian's National Zoo in Washington, D.C. just marked 50 years since the giant pandas first came to the zoo as part of a conservation program. It was back in 1972. The two giant pandas were a gift from China. The National Zoo says fewer than 2,000 giant pandas live in the wild, so working to preserve and protect these bears is very important. All right, let's switch gears now and focus on a subject that may not be an easy one for a lot of us to talk about, and that's our feelings and emotions. Did you know that April is National Stress Awareness Month? All of us, kids and grown-ups, experience stress but there are some things you guys can do to de-stress, to feel a little better. Our pal Kerry Sanders is here with one sure way to boost your mood and make you smile. Lester, there's no question that the last two years have been tough on kids and adults too. And now with the war in Ukraine on TV screens and computer screens, it's okay to be sad. But did you know there's something that you can do to help adults cope and help yourself at the same time? Get outside. It seems so simple. Play a game of pickup football with your friends. Take a bike ride. Run until you're out of breath. Doctors say for the past two years, all of us, kids and adults, have been locked up to avoid COVID. Did you have endless months of classes at home via computer? Add a steady stream of sad news, and it only makes sense we may feel this way. It's so stressful right now.
right now because the U Russia and Ukraine war, COVID, and loss of family members, it's pretty sad. I'm always happy, but then my mom, she comes home from work and she's just stressed. Another word for stress is anxiety. If you're 9, 10, 11 years old, what's happening? Yeah, so stress is some, you may feel sad or you may not feel happy. You might feel anxious. You don't know what's going to happen in, in your body, such as your heart rate going higher than usual. So your heart beats higher, and that means your heart muscles working harder. And therefore, when your muscle works harder, it actually cause pressure on your other systems. That can actually, unfortunately, cause problems later on to your health. Dr. Hansa Bargava has a new book about coping with stress. She's also a mother of two kids herself. How important is it getting out there and having some physical activity? Physical activity is it's almost like a magic bullet. If you go and even do 15 to 20 minutes, 30 minutes of physical activity, whatever that is, it not only is good for your body and helps your muscles, but it also helps your mood. It can actually reduce anxiety. It can reduce stress levels. Studies show that being physically active cuts your risk of developing anxiety by half over time. But most kids aren't doing enough, spending only four to seven minutes of unstructured play outside versus seven and a half minutes playing video games. Sure, it can be fun, but it's not physical exercise. In Utah, at Alta Ski Resort, the Bennett family says skiing not only helps their mental health, it's fun to do things as a family. Oh, it's just fun to get out, to get exercise, to be in the outdoors. During the pandemic, ski resorts saw an increase in skiers, mostly because it was an outdoor activity and generally not too close to others. It's just awesome to be out here, to be able to enjoy the crisp mountain air, get out of the smog from the valley and uh, enjoy the sunshine. Skiing is not for everyone. This can be an expensive sport, of course, but there are things that you can do that are really free, like go to a lake or the beach. Even if you can't swim, you can play. What are they getting from that physical activity now that maybe they've been robbed? Yeah, the physical activity is so important for our emotional and mental health. So just as you have preventative strategies for preventing diabetes and hypertension, heart attacks, and even cancer, you sh we all should have a preventative toolbox to prevent mental illness. Dr. Bargava says we all need to use our three C's, self-care, finding time for yourself, connection, find two or three people who have your back, and community, join a club or team. If you can achieve all of those C's, the three C's, are we smiling more than frowning? We absolutely are smiling more than frowning. And Lester, you know how someone, maybe a teacher, says to a kid, hello, sunshine? Well, it turns out sunshine is good for us. So remember to get outside, even when it's cold, to absorb the sunshine because the rays will actually make you feel happy. Lester? All right, Carrie, thanks so much for me. And I got to tell you, the beach is my favorite place to go and relax, watch the dolphins swim by. All right, speaking of a mood boost, there's a new animated action comedy out this week that is hoping to make audiences smile as they go on an adventure with the bad guys. Our very own Kids Edition correspondent Lucy caught up with Mr. Shark and the movie's director in our latest Lucy Listens installment. On the outside, the five of you are villains. The Bad Guys tells the story of five animal outlaws who are on a mission to turn their bad behavior into something good. <laughs> Wolf, what are you doing? What? Yeah! yeah. Oh, that! Uh, I, I, I'm sorry, I thought it was uh, obvious. We're gonna go good! Uh, you totally lost me. I, mean, I told him to stop drinking out of the toilet. Hey, did you get hit on the head? Our five bad guys decide to become the good guys, except that they're really, really, really bad at being good. Hey, look, it's a cat stuck in a tree. It doesn't get much simpler than that. Now, what in this scenario would give you that good tingle? Eating it? This is why I always carry two pieces of bread with me. 
No, I want you to smack it, skin it, stab it, saute, sing to it. Actor and comedian Craig Robinson is the voice behind Mr. Shark. Say, you want some cake? You seem a little hangry. <laughs> In the Bad Guys, you play Mr. Shark. Can you describe that character? Uh, Mr. Shark is, is a uh, is a gentle giant. He's a he's a, uh, a shark who who's sensitive and he loves his friends. But he does if you if you make him upset, he he's, he will bring the shark out of him, the mean part. But uh, for the most part, he's a gentle giant who's sensitive and loves his friends. How did you come up with the voice for your character? Well, it's more the energy of the character. The voice is pretty much mine, but the. Uh, the energy was, uh, we, we were in this studio. I was in the, in the booth and, and I had the director over here on Zoom and the producer on Zoom. And we were like, you know, making jokes and laughing and we found the energy of the character and then we just applied that. If you're like me, you might have wondered just what it takes to make an animated movie like The Bad Guys. To find out, I went straight to the director who tells me he is like the captain of the team. Can you explain how an animated movie works? Oh wow, that's a lot of work, okay. So you start with a script, it's a scenario, right? Somebody writes it, it writes the story. After the story is written, the director says they sketch the whole movie out on drawings, say so he calls storyboards, and then it's time to make the story come to life. So we film all these storyboards with some backgrounds and actors that, that like the characters that don't really move. It gives us the same thing, kind of animatic, but in 3D, in computer graphic images. And then after that, that layout, we give part of it to the animators, and the animators are gonna make the characters move and emote and give them, you know, expression. Excuse me, Chief. What? From there, the director says there's a whole lot more to do, and it includes everyone, from set designers to special effects and other teams who work with him, and the actors to put the movie together. How did you pick the actors for each part? Well, you know, when you cast uh, the actors, it's a long process. You have to uh, know the characters that you're writing, you know, for your book, for, for your story, for your movie, and kind of find the, the, the actor that would fit the best for each character. Some actors improvise at times, like Craig Robinson says he did in The Bad Guys. And it was uh, creating it right there on the spot and, uh, and finding the magic of what Mr. Shark will become. Like, you, let's say I read the lines a few times and then I'll start to improvise around them. And then that's what would uh, take it to the next level. Oh, stop it. You're making me blush. How do you know if what you're saying will like seem funny if it's not in front of a real audience? Well, I had the privilege of having a director and a producer in front of me on these Zooms. So when they laughed, I was happy, you know? So, th so they laughed, I laughed. I'm going to give you a push pop. Great, push pop just for me. No, to share. Why? Well, on a fundamental level, it's about putting someone else's needs ahead of your own. <laughs> I don't want to give away the ending, but is there an important message for kids from the movie? Yes, there's several. One is, uh, you know, about friendship, having each other's back. One is about don't judge a book by its cover. And before I could say so long to Craig, my sister Zoe wanted to get in on the conversation. Zoe! Oh my gosh, this is your... The little twin. What was your favorite part? Where I dropped the statue and go, my baby! My baby! The Bad Guys is rated PG and opens in theaters on April 22nd. Well, this just got a little weird. Oh, and for kids who want to make an animated movie one day, the director has this advice. For kids who want to make animated films one day like you do, what do you recommend? First of all, Make sure you're very curious. Be super curious. Like, open your mind and, and try to tell yourself stories and write stories. I'm sure you like to tell stories. Keep that and keep doing that. You know, create characters, create little stories. We may be bad, but we're so good at it. <laughs> Lucy, that was great. Thanks very much. We should note that our parent company, NBC Universal, is the distributor for DreamWorks Films. 
Finally, in our inspiring kids series, a teenage girl from Arkansas is making a difference for some seniors. She's helping make their wishes come true. We get details now from our good friend, Kristen Dahlgren. 14-year-old Ruby Chitsy is a real gem. Growing up, she would always tag along with her mom when she went to work in nursing homes. That's our little Miss Ruby. And it's here where Ruby made a lot of older friends. I can really connect with them. They're just like us, just eight years older. When Ruby was 10, her friend Pearl had to give up her dog because she could no longer afford to take care of it. That's when Ruby learned many nursing home residents often live off a monthly small personal allowance for special expenses. In Ruby's home state of Arkansas, that allowance is just $40. Something as basic as a haircut can be a good chunk of that money. Ruby wanted to help, so she made her rounds in the nursing home and started asking questions. I went around the nursing home and I asked them, if you could have any three things in the world, you know, what would they be? And my mom expected them to stay, say stuff like cars and money and a big fancy house. But when I went around and asked them, all they wanted was fresh fruit and a new pillow, better shampoo, better shampoo, meals out, and just really simple stuff that we experience in our everyday lives. Ruby started granting those wishes. She went to the store and filled her cart with things like soda, cat food, pillows, and even a meal from Taco Bell. This Diet Coke is way out of your budget if you receive $40 a month. This wish is for Carolyn and she's going to love it. Ruby's residents, as she calls them, love their wishes. Great teenager, a wonderful teenager. To Diane Yipe, Ruby is like a fairy god teenager. Couldn't afford tennis shoes. They bought me tennis shoes, send me cards, they give me glasses, just goes on and on. Sometimes these small items have the biggest impact. I saw people cry over fresh fruit, a brand new pillow, shampoo and conditioner, and it really, it touched my heart. Ruby is granted way more than just three wishes. With help of donations, she's granted more than 25,000 wishes for seniors in need over the past few years. She and her kid board of other activists across the country collect donations to fulfill wishes, but their mission is getting more challenging. Because of inflation, these small things are getting more expensive. All of that adds up quickly, so that $40 gets you a lot less. I think probably two or three years ago, nursing home residents could buy a lot more than what they could today. So I think it makes it 10 times more important for us to help them even more. Would you like this? Higher prices won't stop her though. She knows just how important her visits are. Sometimes nursing home residents can feel like they're alone with no one looking out for them. It makes people, they're lonely, feel like there's something. Just to make them happy for their week or their month or even in their year is just great to me and it fulfills me a lot. It's so nice to meet Aww, you. It's nice to meet you too. Girl. All right, Kristen, thanks so much. And Ruby, keep up the great work. Really terrific. Well, that's going to do it for us parents. Just a reminder, if your child has a question about any topic in the news, feel free to email a video to us at nightlynewskids at nbcuni.com. And we'll try to answer them in an upcoming program. You can also follow us on Instagram at nightlykids. Thanks for watching, everybody. Remember, take care of yourself and each other. So long.